pleased with the result. Uh, like talk goes only a year away now. We have to, I suppose the first task for us now this year is to qualify the boat. So the, the Olympic qualifiers are at this year's World Championships at the end of August. Such so impressive scenery they, around here. Year. Okay. We have to finish in the top seven there to qualify the boat for the Olympics. Really so is beautiful. This is May. Would you, when would you be in peak fitness? Like, would you be starting well, into it now? It's it's pretty much an ongoing process. Like, we're just constantly training, trying to get fitter all the time. And but you've been fitter, there. harder, yeah. stronger, yeah. happier. Like Look at this coochie coo here. A real yeah. soccer yeah. mom car. Get out of the way! Don't need you. Don't even want to think about you. Because you're actually hindering my progress in life. With your words, your thoughts, your feelings. And I actually can't progress. I feel like I'm in a box just because I know you. Do you know what I mean? You've been in my life a while, C-Class. I've got emotional attachment to you. Kind of like a Stockholm Syndrome. I can't shake you off because of the past. And I feel as though you're tapering my future. You're narrowing what my future could be as I take over. I release from myself the shackles of anxiety that you have attributed to me with your C-class consumeristic body. And now I'm going full AMG into the Kessel Shen. In terms of energy expenditure and so on, um, there's no impact, so the, oh. the risk of injury is Sweet little Kessel Shen now as we move 210 kmph. Ivan Yates! Into the Steckel Shrek we go. Another sweet little touch here. Bit of oversteer, nothing I can't handle. Sure, I fuck. Didn't I take a C class around Montello with two tires blown out? Sniped. I got sniped off the track by an old adversary from Gonzaga <laughs> who had. Who had a. He actually had access to a high powered Barrett 50 cal. And <laughs> he was waiting in the hilltops, the hillside, and the forest. I was going for a victory lap. He knew. He fucking knew who I was. And that man's name? Johnny Sexton. He knew that I had. Yeah, I had everything that that it required to become a successful fly half. And he hated me from the day dot. I used to play him. When he was playing rug down, he was playing the egg ball down at St. Mary's or wherever the fuck. He hated me. Also, he didn't like that I was driving a Mercedes to school. Fucking 14 years of age, man. Didn't, it was farther, my, my dad was a guard. My dad was a guard. Blind eye was taken to what I was doing, driving, to, rocking up to school, doing the junior cert in my, and driving home in my Mercedes. Didn't even pass a goddamn test. Didn't need it. Didn't need it. Didn't need to because I was gonna go straight into a high-powered job as soon as I finished school anyway. You know. And he followed me. Johnny Sexton purchased a Barrett 50 Cal when he was in. He was on holiday in Pakistan at the gun market. And it wasn't an official 50. It wasn't an official Barrett, but it was a pretty decent copy. I'll give you that for nothing. He really, he really pulled out all the stops that day. He took a diazepam so that his muscles were relaxed. And he just waited. He knew he had a window because he knew that I liked to go there every weekend. So he waited from Friday until Sunday, that evening, Sunday evening when I went there. Late, of course. It was the kids' birthdays, you know, he can't miss them. And uh, so I got, I, got the dri I got the drive in anyway. Sexton. Took out the two fucking tires. I just had them placed on the car itself, you know. 
These were customized bridge stones that were actually handcrafted by children out in Gwangu. And uh, you might say that's late child labor, guys. You might say that's child labor, guys. But at the end of the day, it's all relevant when you take into account the economy, the economics of the situation. Those kids are actually earning a pretty good wage. Everyone to make a pledge to recycle now where are we we silver it better be silv and the lads are you going to fucking jeez we got our work cut out for ourselves here man it's gonna be another fucking 25 seconds that's tough man and few different places that's tough exactly yeah i get some pictures here it's effectively doing the recycle it's a plastic and the like can i as well as being a sex And we really will be rooting for you both in August at the World Championships. And Hi to everyone in the chat. Sir Fine Gold, Jimmy Jesus, Andrew Mooney, Pandas Love, Jamie Roger, Deck Murphy. Hope you're getting all right, guys. Gonna turn down. Let's just put the ads on, guys. Innovation that excites. And they're all. We have a very special off the ball show for horse racing fans Great coming on show. Thursday, May 23rd. We're going to be at the new Curra Race Course with an all star lineup from the world of racing and sport to preview the Curra Spring Festival. From Let's Friday listen to the radio on the to way home. The 26th of May. It's going to be a family affair. Pull Martin into the hard shoulder and listen to this. We'll be joined by Kildare All Ireland finalist turned trainer Willie McCreary. The only way to enjoy the show is to be there on the night. Get on to offtheball.com forward slash events now to get your free tickets. Off the ball on News Talk. Over 18s only. When your summer sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, zone up. How are you doing, Zone? Zone, what's the story, man? Do you want to go to the Off the Ball Road Show? What are you doing? Do you mean you can't go? All the boys, man. They're going to be talking about football. They're going to have some guitar music. It's going to be a real casual affair. I hear they've got a sofa with a carpet on it and some like kind of like pub living room backdrop. Yeah, man. You're talking fucking denim. Uh, Carhartt shirts. Bottles of Hino. It's all happening, man. Off the ball roadshow. Let's go, me and you. All times. What do you mean you can't go? Sure, she has a birthday every year, man. Sack her off. She's only your wife. Come on, it's gonna be a great night. We might even get to meet some of the guys who present, you know? I'm friends with a couple of them on Twitter, yeah. I'm always messaging them, like, you know, they don't get back, but I mean. All right, okay. No, I'm just going around Nürburgring, Nordschleifer at the moment, trying to get a silve. Keep bronzing the fuck out of it, though, you know? All right. Go on. See you later. Oh, yeah, wait, Zone. Did you speak to Zurich yet? Yeah, you'd want to get onto Zurich, man. You're fucking 38. See you later. Well, that's zone out of it anyway. He says his wife's birthday is coming up. Don't blame him for that. Do blame him a little bit for that, to be honest. Ireland's business leaders. That's another one I'm at, actually. Sorry. Ireland.ie I've been thinking about what I'd do with the 3,800 euro grant you get when you install a solar PV system from Energlades. You could go on a holiday to the sun. Don't fly anymore. Bad for the environment. Mm, buy a brand new it's used car. Six Again, bad Time for the, the environment. environment. Tell you what, what dealer. You could invest Kevin in Loftus. Loftus. Thanks so much, man. That are good for Thanks very much, Kevin Loftus. Really kind of you, man. Really kind of everyone, actually, to be donating. 
Yeah, man, the Off The Ball Roadshow, Ushin Callan's gonna be there. Ushin pulled a few strings, actually. Thanks so much, Ush. The Ushmaster pulled a few strings and got us backstage passes to the Off The Ball Roadshow. It's gonna be on next Tuesday weeknight. Fucking fingers crossed we get to meet some of the guys afterwards, like, you know. I've actually got a rugby ball. I want one of them to sign it. Bruno, how are you doing, bud? Fucking nice bit of Bitcoin. Have you think? Have you thought about fucking investing some Bitcoin into any of the other cryptos? Yeah, I have a friend in town. He's got a fucking great portfolio. I can hook you up. I can hook you up, Bruno. Mama Duck as well. Get out of that. Thanks very much. And I want to say, Mama Duck, good day, mate. That's the Australian. <laughs> That's the Australian coming in. I was never out there myself, like, but I mean, a few friends who live out there now, they're not coming back, you know? Why would you? Why the fuck would you? Jesus, Jimmy Jesus, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it, but thank you so much. Yeah. The Nürburgring Nordschleifer. I feel like a bit of a lifer here. A bit of a Kevin Loftus situation. Up the Zaga. Up the Zaga. Let's do this. Let's do this. I got a bit fucking challenged there near the end of that last track. Anonymous. Ushin Fagan. Thanks very much, Ush. Thank you very much, Yush. Really appreciate it. Everybody out there. Well, have you, Yush? Have you considered putting your money into an ISA or a PEP or a Tessa? Or even a fucking long-term savers account? My friend Kev Meister has a great advice bureau he's running in town at the moment. I think you should check him out, Kev. I think you should. It's Bitcoin or bust. Davy L. Thank you very much. And Liam G. Liam G. And everybody else out there in the mainframe. Right, we'll just hit the track again, guys. Just needed that little bit of a break, you know. Just to accrue a bit of an accrued interest in, accrue a bit of interest in my mind about the track because you can race this track again and again and again it's all get, it's going in there it's like the ram the random access memory inside my brain the track has just been loaded onto the brain every twist turn apex chicane straight bottleneck hairpin it's all going in and it's all going to come out on the track then you know so, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. You know, there's nothing much I can fucking say to you, you know? Did you get onto Zurich yet about that? I think you should, John. Thanks very much, everybody who's donating there. They're coming in, and it's, it's a real... It's a real heartwarming situation. Just want to say to you all, you're all fucking great. And I'll take you all out for a spin soon enough. Mondello, I've got 24 hour access. Mercedes Lover 69. I've got 24 hour access to that. that Belong, track. you have a finance partner who knows your business. I can provide access to funding really quickly. Lara Strand of Lolly and Cooks is among the gro. Let's turn that radio off. Cause celebrare. I just put pen to paper on a new pension deal from Zurich. You should too, John. Mike Johnson, thanks so much. Thank you so much, pal. I really appreciate it. So, just a quick rundown of what we're doing here, guys. Bit of a Mike Johnson rundown for you here. Maximus 2, thank you so much. And Gen Genelovisius, can't, can't pronounce your... What is that Latin name, is it? I don't I'd know. offer you a bit of slur, but... Uh, Liam G, man. Of that last night. <laughs> Welcome to the galaxy, pal, do you know what I mean? After the week, I, I wouldn't. Know. I wouldn't usually uh, drive one of these fucking shitty Nissans, but I mean... It's all I've got to... 
to use at the moment, as a friend from Zaga used to say, you have to piss with the cock you got. Cheers, man. Thanks very much, Liam. Appreciate it, bud. Welcome to the AMG Driving Academy Intermediate Class SLS AMG 10. One of the greatest mercs to ever come off the production line. Here you will learn the techniques and rules necessary to drive the hallowed Nürburgring safely. Last of all, it's time to try a non-stop lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife in the SLS AMG. Even if you've had no problems driving it in the 300 SL, the greater average speed will make this, without error, much more difficult. If you find that you keep making mistakes, try driving it around at 80% of the limit, John. Okay? Learn the rhythm of your own, and just from there you can start to work on reducing your lap time. So, I mean, at the moment, we're hitting a bronze. It's not good, folks. We need to shave at least 30 fucking seconds off the off the ball sack here. So we're gonna go for that. Big shout out to everyone watching. Let's let's take it for another spin. Into the first, hard and re yeah, yeah, sorry about that. We'll start again. The clothes, the gloves I'm wearing, the racing gloves put me off there. Fire retardant. Sparkos. I had a pair of customized Sparkos, handmade by uh, Eddie Jordan, actually. He used to fucking do that in his spare time. He'd just hand stitch racing gloves together for people he loved. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll restart that again, guys. 130 kilometer crash on the second band. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Anybody play GT Sport out there on the PS4? Is it worth a lash, is it? I just, I'm, I'm so loyal to this game at the moment. Well, I have been since 2010. Since it came out in 2010. Had some back turn. Had GT6 on the PS3. Had to restart that again. Had GT6 on the PS3. Didn't like it, guys. Didn't like it. Okay, here we go. No fuck ups this time. Just pure driving pleasure. Sorry, guys. Just gonna turn that up one more time. That's better for me. That's better. That's much better for me. That's not good. John, would you give squash a go with juice in your thirties and your knees up to it? I would, yeah. Let's sort that out. Let's sort that out in the future. My knees, I don't know. I've never played it. I've heard it's a fucking great game, though. I love tennis. I can play. Look. Don't get me started on the court. Because it'll be fucking th straight sets. Straight <laughs> Don't get me started on tennis, guys. I'll take you down to Pete Sampras Town. Phil Mitchell, Steve Jennings, all the boys. Okay. Ivan Yates, Matt Cooper, Pat Kenny, Dennis O'Brien, News Talk. Mercedes pension plans Rolex Oh I have a Rolex upstairs in the safe guys only comes out on special occasion We had a safe built into the uh, box room there last year after a spate of robberies on our estate Seen this guy? See you later. You should have worked harder. You're driving a nice coupe, but it's nothing, nothing compared to this AMG. Do you hear me? Go back home. This is Mondello, baby. Flugplatz. 
flying into the flug plots like it ain't no thing. And look at Lime, Mr. Lime Green up here. We, we can see him already. And we're not even past our dinner time. We're gonna head off, we're gonna cut him off before we get to the big bender. Here we go, right into his fucking arse. Good luck, see you later. You should have fucking done better than that, mate. What are you driving, the lime green? Who picked the color? Your fucking wife. That was Zonad's car back there. Made the mistake of letting his missus in on the deal. <laughs> he made the mistake of letting the missus close the deal. And here I am, thrashing around in the forest section. Eddie Jordan told me I'd never make it past this bend here. I said, listen, Eddie, don't ever call me again. And with that, deleted him from the phone book. Also, left the WhatsApp chat group he, he had me in. And he added me into that, you know what I mean? His memes were shite. They were normie memes. Eddie, Eddie normie, I used to call him. What he'd do is he'd recycle these shit memes that his uh, that his family was sharing on Facebook. He once took a picture of the memes on his phone and then sent them. I I said, yeah, Jordan man, buzzing hornets, more like buzzing bollocks, man. You're taking photographs of shit memes and sending them on on WhatsApp and Snapchat to me. I want good resolution, man. I want at least a fucking original JPEG or two. He said, I'm sorry, Connor. I said, yeah, so he should be, mate. Man, you need to go back to, go back to school, Eddie. He said, I'm in my fucking mid to late 60s. I said, it's never too early, Eddie, to get your junior cert. Hit the books, Ed, hit the books. He said, he said, he said, do you know what, Connor? I might just do that, but I feel a little bit, I feel a bit too old going back to school now and doing the junior cert. I said, listen, Eddie, man, why not come round? <laughs> why not come round the house next week, man? I'll give you a few grinds. I'll give you a few grinds, Ed. He said, thanks very much, I'll do that. But uh, we had the blowout on Snapchat and WhatsApp before the day he was meant to come round. I said, look, Ed, fuck off. Fuck off and leave me alone, man. Now we're making good time here as we, as we move in. Ah, really just beginning to lose the... Ah, Eddie Jordan, man. Fucking Eddie Jordan. <laughs> Fucking Eddie Jordan, man. That's what he'll do. <laughs> it's almost six o'clock. Time to get down to your local Mercedes Day's dealer, dealer and ask, ask about, about test, test driving, driving the new Mercedes. And that's what Eddie does, man. Don't know if any of you've ever had the privilege of meeting Eddie Jordan. But let's just say this. He's a charismatic kind of guy. He fucking, you know, he dominated Formula One for, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say dominated, you know, I said that to him and to his face, but I was just, I was humoring him, like, you know, plumossing him. I said, Eddie, do you remember back in the day, you were running right around the track, you had cult hard, no you didn't, you had fucking, Ed, you had Irvine on your books. Who else did he have in the chat? <laughs> Who else? Did he have Damon Hill? <laughs> oh, the story will continue. Will continue. When I slither home after a hard day out in the fields, there's nothing I like more than lashing a few stickings into the fireplace and setting fire to them. Be careful not to burn your hands like I did. While I'm waiting for that baby to get going, I do a few rolls on the ground and a few reptilious repetitions just to get the blood flowing. Once those flames are licking high, it's time to stick your coal in it. 
You can generate extra draftage by using your gooch as a waft. Now all that's left is to sit back and warm your sack by the flames. This message was brought to you by Firelighters. Fucking shoe me. Ralph Schumacher. The little bambino brother of Michal. I was like Eddie Normie, man. You had Ralphie shoe me. And fucking Eddie Irv, the Irv Meister. You, were, you, you even had Katie Price. And she was known as Jordan back in the day. You had them. And you're telling me you don't even know your ABCs, Eddie. Is that the crack? Because look, man, you're gonna, you, there's going to be a moment in life, man, where you're going to need that. You know, he partied too hard, too. He was, he was partying with Jordan, with Katie Price. Look, I know all about it, man. I was down in the pit stop for Silverstone 93. Down in the pits for Silverstone 93. I had a bit of a meet and greet with the boys before they hit the track. I said to, I said to Eddie Irv, I said to the Irv Meister, this is 96 actually, I said to Irvine, listen Irv, you're going to go out there today and you're going to race the best fucking race you've ever raced ever. Alright, do you know how I know about that? Because I have done better than you in other realms. Okay, you might be up there in the fucking racing world, but I've been a senior sales executive for Mercedes Ireland now for at least fucking seven years. I left a high power trading job as a financial strategist in KPMG. Okay. Now get out there and fucking race and drive. Get out there and fucking drive, Ed. I went over then to shoe me. I said, look, man, you're nothing compared to your bro. You're fucking nothing compared to your bro. So I just, all I want to see from you is passion, all right? And you see that man there? Pointing to Eddie, I was like, he's better than you. You got to support him. Don't overtake. Guard. Treat him like a little fucking dove in your hand and let him fly at the end to safety, and um, I gave him my business card, I said, Ralph, pass one on to fucking Michael as well, all right, if he wants to pop in later on for a bit of advice on a new Merc, you might want something when you're driving around, or even a fucking holiday home in Kalini, you know, never got back to me, never heard from him again, but I am, uh, I mean, Times change, you know? Times change. Look, let's give this another crack of the whip, guys. Let's give this another crack of the whip. I'd offer you a bit of slur, but uh, I raided most of that last night. Killian Willian. blame me, though. After the week I've had. After the fucking week I've had, Killian. Don't think you could blame me if I didn't offer you the rest of the slur. Let's restart that. What a pathetic fucking situation halfway through, man. It's almost six o'clock. Time to get down to your local Mercedes dealer and ask about test driving. Benson and Hedges. Thanks so much. I actually brokered the deal. I managed to get Benson and Hedges to sponsor Jordan, Team Jordan there. I was the conduit for that. There was an after sesh after uh, the Hockenheim race in 1993. I think it was 93. We were in Hockenheim. I was there smoking a 20-pack of H, B and H. And I was like, look, B and H, come here, man. Grabbed him around the neck. I said, you know this guy here? Pointing at Eddie Jordan. Eddie Jordan was sat down on a chaise long with his dick out and the dressing gown open. Katie Price was going around just fucking serving drinks at that stage. She was still Jordan, like, you know, she didn't have everything that she has now, the empire that she's built. And uh, I said, 
Do you know this guy, Eddie Jordan? He's the next big fucking thing, man. You want your sm and he loves your smokes. He loves your smokes. <laughs> and he's got a fucking he's got a sponsorship deal to to seize before the end of the year. I think you could fucking do business, do you know? I said, "Ed, put the dick away, man." Smoky Joe here. <laughs> Smoky Joe here has a few wog wangas of cash. A few gazonga wads of cash. He wants to fucking spread them thick over the spoiler of your new fucking model. I'm not talking about the rack on. K I'm not talking about Katie's rack. The whole place laughed. Um, she looked a little bit uncomfortable. But I mean, that was the time that we were in at the. You know, there was no reprimanding gonna be taking place there. It was a high-powered, highly charged room full of machismo and testosterone. And uh, yeah, I managed to cut myself a real sweet deal on that fucking Benson and Hedges money. You know, the Smoky Joe deal. The I had a little clause in the bottom of the contract, guys, called the Smoky Joe, the Smoky Joe release, which was, I get 10% of everything with, uh, that could rise to about 25% if they win the Formula One World Championship. That never happened, of course, but I mean, it's still a lot of fucking money, man. Tobacco is the place to be. If you want to make, if you want to make big Wanga money, man, if you want to make big flaming big Gonzaga loads of Wonga cash, you want to be getting the Smoky Joe Lula money. It's an awful shame now they've, they've lost so much money since they've stopped the branding, you know, because it's just hard getting children to identify with the, the packaging, you know? You've seen outliers in the market such as Amber Leaf rise up and take the throne of giant stalwarts in the Smoky Joe market, such as Marlboro and fucking B&H, Buzz and Hornets, Silk Cut, all because you can't put a fucking picture of your brand on the box, you know? I know people who've lost their fucking lives over that shit. Uh... But yeah, anyway, getting back to the Eddie Jordan scenario, I managed to organize that deal itself. Benson and Hedges in bed with Eddie Jordan. And I'd say he had a buzzing hard on after that night, after I said these guys had the money, you know? But yeah, that's the way it goes. You know, Formula One, I, had, I got out of that game. I just had to get out of there, man. It was suffocating me, you know? There's nothing like taking the Merc out for a spin around Mondello on a Sunday afternoon, provided Johnny Sexton isn't there with the sniper rifle taking out my fucking custom-made Bridgestones, all because of some stupid disagreement we had back as teenagers. But, uh, you know, we might be able to put that to right soon enough. I actually got onto him on Twitter there a few weeks back. He still hasn't wrote back, you know. He said, look, look, Sexto. Why don't we put the fucking hatchet to bed, yeah? You come. I'll pick you up later on. And we'll head into fucking town. Maybe we'll go to Marco Pierre White's steakhouse. See you later, alligator. Another Schweinsteiger here as we come into the Flukenplatz. The carousel. It's never seen a waltzer cart like me glide through. Up to the last couple of bends now on this. This is where Zona took a fucking donut spin on his stag do. We ended up having to get the safety car out. And uh, bring him back. I... Home straight. Easy. One, two, uni flu. Back in again. Hopefully we're going to get silv on this. I'd say we're not silv. We're still bronze. But, I mean, we might have shaved off a fucking 10-second deficit. 
off what we made the last time. Seven forty two, guys. So, what's that like seven cents? Hope you're all doing all right out there, guys, in the mainframe. Constant throwing. How are you, buddy? Darren Cranda. Steve Jennings. Nick Babish. Really sad, yeah. At the age of 70, the legendary Formula One driver passing away after what was an incredible life, I suppose, defined by those events at the 1976 German Grand Prix uh, when he crashed his car and it was engulfed in flames and he suffered really severe burns. Uh, people who are familiar with his appearance might be uh, aware of that. And the most remarkable thing of all, came back six weeks later to sit back in a Formula One car and race again. Just a remarkable comeback at the time. Won the Formula One Championship the year after. Won a third, uh, then an 80. So we're, what are we, 10 seconds off silver? We're going to give it one more go, guys. Okay. I was actually uh, speaking to Lewis Hamilton last Tuesday. He's thinking of going, he's thinking of packing it all in and becoming a paraglider. I was like, have you thought this through, Lou? Have you thought this through, man? Why don't you come over for a fucking weekend? I've got an Airbnb, it's free next weekend. It's your fucking, it's, you've got the run of the place. I'll give you the keys to the fucking C-Class. Or if you want, we can fucking head over to Nürburgring and do a lap. What do you want to do? He said, I'd rather, he doesn't want to drive, I'd rather not drive. I've been driving all my life. One thing I don't want to do when I'm off the track is drive more tracks. I was like, yeah, but you haven't driven a track with me. You haven't been a passenger in my car. And he was like, you're right. I was like, you know fucking well I'm right, Lewis. The neck of you. So he's coming over next week. We might live stream it. We might fucking live stream it. The Lulu equation. He's lost all passion for it, like, you know? Just says it doesn't doesn't excite him anymore. Nikki Lauda, thanks so much. Um, he came back from that, Nikki Lauda. God rest his soul. And he's racing six weeks after the priest was giving him his last rites. Six weeks later, he's back on track. Burning the track up. Eating the track. Patrick... Patrick Letourneau. Get a grip. You're 38. How much money do you even have, man, in the credit union? You know they'll give you three times what you have there. Let's do this. Let's go for fucking gold. Let's be real about this. We're going to go for silver. Silver stone. Crank up the volume once more. There we go. Let's do this. Feeling really good about this. Love the sound of that engine. Just purrs like a kitten. Like a kitten that's just been fed pure fucking milk. Not only from its mother's teeth, but... The, the owners of that pet have gone out and bought the proper premium whiskers shit. Cost a pretty pen, but it's worth it in the end. If you want a kitten that fucking pumps on... <laughs> if you want a kitten that's pumping on all cylinders, you want to be feeding that kitten the purest fucking milk from whiskers. I actually did an advert with whiskers a few weeks back. They're still, they're still pumping out quality cat stuff. They're still pumping out quality cat food, I'll have you know. They got a bit of a scare there when Kitty Cat hit the market. And also you've got these new batch of kids on the scene who are, you know, angling for the, the fine, unrefined, 
uh, unprocessed market, you know, the green organic crew, the Purina kind of guys, the Hills food guys, you know, high quality pet food, expensive, but it means that your cat won't get diabetes or your dog won't become diabetic. 60 euro a bag for a fucking a month long feed of dog food. Doesn't like it under there. Doesn't want the injection, you see who would. But after two years now, he's actually learned that he does get a treat after the injection. And he comes over. Still tries to roll around on the floor when you go at him with the need. But it's not as scared. He's not as scared as he used to be. Now, we're coming up strong on the hard Schleifer here. And I'm an absolute Nurburgring nerd. I know all these turns. I very much for sticking with me on this. We're going to go for one more pop at the fucking Silver Troph. <sighs> right, let's do this. Let me just have a quick... Let me just check check on Yates there for a moment. Nutritional experts at Vitabiotics is uniquely formulated with glucosamine, vitamin C and D, and copper. Pass, just dusting off the cobwebs here. The aim of the game here is actually to get gold as we hit into the Quiddlebacker hoe. And this is one hoe you don't want to fuck around with because the pimp I've got working for me, he'll fucking smack you up and leave you high and dry. His name, Zurich. He doesn't take shit from no man. Here we go into the Sidewinder Spook and Sleuth. Into the Schweiden Cruise. Need to go heavy into the back of this con. Ah! Oh, playing in the sandcastle like an absolute baby. No! No! Yokohama tires. That's what I want on my car. Replace the Indonesian child labor tires that I have. I want the ones that were made in Tokyo by letters on it that spell out his own name. Zonad. In Japanese writing, man. It's a real tasteful piece. Metzgesfell. This is one of my favorite bends in the whole track. Lovely trees at the side of the track there. Coniferous, not so sure. Callenhard. Here we listen to that bad boy. Not that I condone such debaucherous behavior. God forbid you'd have a nasty crash. But look, you know the Germans. Once you're out in the fucking Flugenplatz, every man for himself, as I said, as I said to Zona before he. Before he hit the fucking side apex and had to go to the hosp. Every man for himself. See you later. And that was that. Looking forward to the next tete a tete I have with him. When I get back from Germania the weekend. Look at this coochie coo! Bye bye! What's that, 740? Five seconds off the pace, guys! I think I'm gonna stay. I think I'm gonna have another go, John. I think I might have another boost to this. We might, we might get there. I've just spoke to your wife. You've been the victim of bank fraud. Thanks very much, Killian Willian. Cannot believe that guy's five seconds off the fucking silver trophy, Oni. Me lost Karen, how are you, buddy? Great to see you, man. Even though I can't see you, I feel like I can see you there in the chat. 
Ah, Steve Jennings, your username in the game is wrong. I know. I got the PlayStation off some guy called Chris. Got it on adverts.ie. Some guy called Chris. Had to drive out of him. Guy had his it. Put it this way. Guy gave me the PS3. I have about fucking 30 games. For 45 euro. I didn't tell him at the time, but it, that's a dickhead of a deal. Didn't want to insult him, but he lost. He got that wrong. Chris got that wrong, you know? He did. He also forgot to wipe the hard drive. And let's just say he left a lot of photographs on there. A lot of photographs. So I'll, I'm going to keep them on a little subfolder on an encrypted USB. And if I ever need to use them against him, I will. I will. Put them on a mouse pad. I'm thinking of putting them on a cup and sending them to him at Christmas. With a little note attached saying, Chris, there's plenty more where this come from. Have a little tipple on me. And have a cup of tea on me, man. Dot, dot, dot. I'm watching you. Yours sincerely, Zurich. Zurich, Zurich blackmail dot IE. Zurich blackmail dot IE. Any Eddie Jordan picks, Martin C. No picks of the Jordanian Meister, Eddie Normie, as I call him, after his fucking shitty memes debacle. Don't know if you've, uh, if you were hearing me earlier on on the stream, guys, I was relaying a few tales about the time me and Eddie Jordan, the Jordanian dreamer, were on the sesh, Mondello. I used to work with Jordan, Team Jordan back in the day, man. Back when it was Eddie Irvine, fucking Ralphie Shumi, the brother of Michael, sadly at the moment in fucking flux. And uh, Ralph, I said to Ralph at the time, look, man, you're not your brother. But just go out and do the best you can. This is at Silverstone 95, I think it was. Eddie Jordan said, look, Connor, can you come down and give a few fucking pep talks in the pit? So I was there. Every time the cars would come in for their pit stop, I would just, I would lean into the car. Basically, you're, you're watching. The, what you're seeing now is what Ralphie Shumi would see when he was in the pit. It's fucking chaos. 15 seconds of pure, undiluted chaos. And you'd have the guys fixing tires, fucking doing this, that, and the other. And then my face would just pop in like this. <laughs> Fuck. One second, guys. Yeah, shoo me. You've got another 25 laps, son. <laughs> yeah, Shoomster. You'd want to fucking pick up the pace, honey. I don't care if that's a fucking effeminate term. The way you're driving out there. Never seen a man do that. <laughs> never seen a man do that, Shoomus. Now fucking drive, yeah? Eddie Irvine's... Irvine's out there fucking busting his bollocks, Shum. What are you doing? You're a fucking disgrace, man. And then... They just drive off. He'd drive off. And he'd be rattled. His cage would be fucking rattled, man. And I'd be like, yeah. He's... Eddie, don't worry about him, Ed. Don't worry about Ralph, Ed. I fucking had words with him. He ended up fucking finishing three places above what he was meant to, you know? He was, he was, he overtook and he fucking guarded, he shielded uh, Irvine. And then they get, they got back to the fucking press enclosure after the race. And I was just sat in the pit myself, Katie Price. She was known as Jordan at the time. She was just like feeding me olives. And I had a bottle of Grey Goose in 95. Don't think they'd even been invented then. I was just drinking Grey Goose. 
<laughs> like the cut that got the cream. Yeah, Ralph. You shit your pants out there, buddy. You better watch your set, man. Because I've got fucking eyes on you. And that's how it went. Right, let's try and go for silver, guys. Silverstone. Silver trove. Silverstone. Let's go. Let's do this, guys. Yeah, shoo me. He really, his cage was rattled after that. You know, I was actually instrumental in really revitalizing the Eddie Jordan brand. Eddie Jordan, of course, he's going to be coming around to mine for grinds next Tuesday. He's resitting the junior cert soon enough. Sad enough he doesn't know his ABCs, like, you know? Ran a fucking Formula One empire. But he couldn't even do the fucking children's crossword in the times. So, <laughs> we're, uh... Gonna straight out iron out a few kinks in that department, and maybe we actually might get him back on the horse, you know? Not the heroin, like, you know, but just the the motorsport. See this car? Useless. Good luck. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am and what I do for a living? Connor Williams. Former senior sales executive with Mercedes Ireland for 15 years. King of the sales team. I won awards for that shit. Partner at KPMG by the age of 23.5. Some say it was because of my dad. Others say it wasn't because of my dad. And I can get you their numbers if you want to chat with them on the phone. Or you can be added to a WhatsApp group in which they will proceed to tell you how right I am. Straight into fucking KPMG after school. I tell a lie. I actually did a gap year out in Guazango. Helping the poor people. Teaching them how to fucking cook rice. <laughs> and me. <laughs> and actually just teaching them how to be an absolute fucking beast in life, you know. Not that it did any use at all. They really didn't. They were pretty nonplussed with much of my PowerPoints. And many of the points I were making about life in general. Didn't seem to take any of it on board, guys. They didn't seem to take any of my advice on board. And now they're still living subsistence lifestyles out in the fucking plains. The arid steppe of Guazangulang. Fucking mid-Asia. One place I don't really like to visit, but if I have to for a business meeting, a power deal, a powwow with the boys... Had to have, we went for a bit of a powwow with the Taliban there a few years back, back when Bin, Laden, back when Bin Laden was under house arrest for that fucking building thing he did. Fucked it up again, man. Fucked it up again. Sorry, guys. I just thought you're a wife. Max Darwin, how are you, buddy? I'm sorry to tell you, Max, you've been the victim of bank fraud. You have no money left in your account. I hope you're all right. You'd want to get a grip. You're not relying on the state pension, are you? Fool's game, Max. Fool's game, buddy. I have contacts. I can hook you up with something. I can hook you up with something. Have a look in the diary. Get back to me. We'll fucking have a little powwow together. Myself and yourself. I think Lewis Hamilton is gonna fucking take me up on the B&B &B at the weekend. I've, I sent a text out to Ralph Schumacher. I got the scene, but no reply. 
be honest. I think he's afraid of me, John. I think he's afraid. 100. I'd offer you a bit of slur, but uh, Dieter. Most of that last night. You don't even blame me though. After the week I've had. Dieter, thanks so much, baby. Dieter Zetch. Your advertisement disguised as a fever dream is great marketing. Please contact contact Angela Merkel at Mercedes.com for more job ops. I will do. Thanks, Dieter. And Max Darwin dedicates his last dono. 100 big cents dedicated to Sarah Schnake. Gotta say, Sarah, you have a lot of fans. Not just from this side of the screen, but from beyond, too. So thanks very much for that, everyone. Everyone watching and, and supporting as well, you know. Look, um, didn't have time to look at some of the messages that were coming in thick and fast then. Just having a quick look now. Benson and Hedge, banging apartment just came on the market in Donnybrook. Hardwood, oak floors, the whole lot. Ryan Toberty's ex lives next door. Great optics on the area. Financing available right up your alley. And that's from Benson and Hedge with the two euro. Killian Williams says his mate from Gonzaga says he took a lot of Bronson with the Yates <laughs> and was at a wedding down in Tinakuli Lodge. <laughs> Gosp. And I, I think he means gospel. Phil Mitchell says shout out to Miles the fucking schlag. Watch your language, Phil. Watch your lang. Watch your fucking lang, man. It's a lovely day outside. But I'm afraid I need to silver troph this bad boy. I can't go outside and hold my head in, sh in, you know, in high regard. I can hold it high in shame, yeah, with a bronze fucking shame around my neck. Bronze trophy hanging from the fucking neck like a fucking trophy of shame. But it's the silver I'm chasing. Fucking Alicia Silverstone. You've been the victim of bank fraud. Tracker mortgage, thanks so much. It means a lot to have people out there just fucking throwing in the old donos. A few fucking Krispy Kreme donos coming my way. Maybe I'll have a few Krispy Kremes after that, after this sesh. Probably have to head out to Blanche, though. Bit of a trek, bit of a schlep. Fuck it, I might just go for a cronut. Out in fucking Sea Point. John, get a grip. <laughs> You're 38. Mama Duck, get a grip. Have you spoke to Zurich yet? Thanks so much. I'm a fucking sucker for a decent cronut, you know that, John? Cause celebrate. Head down to your local Krona. Total Wolf. Head down to your local Krona broker. And see what you can do for yourself. Why not head down to your local donut broker? A Krispy Kreme. We provide you and your family with the most fattening shite imaginable. Of bank fraud. We Joe, thanks very much. Zurichcronuts.ie We Joe.ie Tell Francis to play Gaelic games for PS2 and win the All Ireland with Mayo. Francis has asked me to relay the message to you guys that he needs to buy a Game Catcher HD. The Game Catcher that he has at the moment doesn't facilitate the fucking PS2. However, maybe I could get the ISO, ISO file. If anybody out there has Gaelic games on a disc and would like me to play it, I can get that ISO, rip the fucking thing, and just play and get Francis to play it, okay? If you have that, please. If you have a high-speed internet connection, you could we transfer it to me. You could just... Just set up an FTP client. If that's too technically demanding, I suggest you just fucking it. Lash it into Dropbox. I'll download it later on. Give Franny the 
I'll give Franny the ISO. Although he probably won't know what to do with it. I've got a fucking DVD burner from 2005 here. Got it out the attic. Had to get it out the attic as Finch. The last day when I was helping clear out some of the old produce, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll show you what I've got here. I seen one of these little babies in fucking CEX. They were selling it for 60 quid. Still holds its vial. Do you know why? Because all the PCs they sell you these days are fucking useless. In the sense that you can't do anything with all digital media. They just want to phase those CDs right out of biz. They'd rather you and I were sucking on their digital tits up there in the fucking iCloud or the iChain as I call it. Chain around the neck. <sighs> they want you to sign up and then they want to fucking bum you with the fucking add-ons and the upsales. Uh-uh. Don't think so. I'm going to digitize everything in my back cat. 320 kilobytes per second. Great fucking bandwidth. 44.4 uh, kilohertz mega wave. And great fucking sound quality off those CDs. High flack. Did you ever rip... <laughs> Did you ever rip to flack? I doubt you did, John. I doubt you even... I doubt you even have to fucking know how. I should be putting this stuff up on a spreadsheet for you because you don't even know what I'm talking about. But I've seen this. Seen that, man. LG. Fucking life's good. Super multi. Rewritable. DVD plus, plus and minus re rewritable. And another thing I noticed there, LG, Liam Gallagher, re rewritable, Robbie fucking Williams, two of the 90s most fucking successful pop icons, together, locked together, in fucking the, the world of digital media, we're gone. We're done. I was gonna get the PS2 out for a look, but I mean, fuck it. It's gone. Thanks very much, John. Stevie B, thanks so much. Stevie B, get a grip. Thank you very much, Stevie B. Polo neck is it's almost six o'clock. Time to get down to your local Mercedes dealer and ask about test driving the new Mercedes. Connor Fowler, how are you doing, buddy? It's just gone seven o'clock, Connor. Time to get down to the AMG Mercedes dealership in, in Geneva. We're gonna go there next week. You know, I'd offer you a bit of slur, but uh, I raided most of that last night. Do you know if you blame me though? After the week I've had. <laughs> Chip Norris, thanks so much. Stevie B says for the sesh with you and Jimmy Crystal back in 04 in Monte Carlo. That's great stuff. It's almost six o'clock. Time to get down to your Chip, local thanks, Mercedes Chip. dealer and ask about test driving the new Mercedes. An anonymous before you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate that. It helps keep the fucking wolf at the door, from the door, should I speak. Although there was a wolf at the door, and we had to fucking lash a few pennies his way. He was trying to blow the fucking house down. I was like, get out of this! Do you think this is the fucking three little pigs? Fuck off. There's no pork here, man. Just pure as you're a goose. Get gold, John, Stephen, Smitty. Not yet. Not yet, bud. We're going to go for Silve. We're five seconds off fucking Silve, man. Five seconds off fucking Silve. Silverstone. Breach of contract. Here we go. Start. 
Or as it's pronounced backwards, TRATS. I'm good friends with the Jerry's that run this track, actually. They let me go on it for free. I have uh, an unlimited pass because I managed to do the track in a great time back on Eddie Irvine's Stag Night. Eddie Irvine's Stag was an absolute fucking disaster. We ended up getting a fucking Heads nearly chopped off us by one of the Mongolian circus acts that he had hired for the night back at the fucking race house. <laughs> Eddie Irvine was operating, a ra operating out of a race house, which was a non-denominational fucking racing enthusiasts, which actually unfortunately housed quite a few racists as well. And um, I had a few grey gooses at that point. I was great. There was a grey geese situation going on. I would said, look, lads, I heard about some of the bants you were just having back there. Within earshot of the Mongolian fucking juggler. I know he can't understand you. But it wasn't cool, guys. It wasn't fucking cool. Basically going on about how he looked, you know, his appearance and stuff. Saying that he... Looked a bit like Peg Sayers. I was like, look... I know this is a lads only affair. A lot of you are red bulled out of it. The Vodis have been flying since noon. I just pulled off the best lap of my life. But it's no reason to lose your morals, your dignity, and your fucking respect, man. Talking about that juggler like that. But he could fucking juggle. And he got a few quid in his pocket back home to Mongolia where he went. Never heard from him again. It wasn't even Irvine that booked him, it was Jordan. Who attended the whole weekend, yet again, in nothing but his dressing gown. And a real stonker. There, there was no let up on it. There were rumblings that he'd been on the fucking Vinny Viags beforehand. Which was puzzling considering there wasn't a woman in sight. He did say that Katie Price had failed to make it. But by that stage, she was really up to them with Peter Andre. Mysterious girl, six pack of abs. glistening skin in that video under the waterfall no surprise that Katie Price couldn't resist unfortunately their relationship came their relationship came to a sticky end I think they're actually at loggerheads with each other now well, I was texting Eddie the last day and he said that they're fucking back on, so. He said, how did you know? He said, he's in a group with them. He added those after I left the WhatsApp group. Or he said, look, there's no way Peter Andre puts up with your shitty memes, Eddie. Your fucking normie memes from Facebook. He says he doesn't mind, and he actually gave him the smiley, double smiley face and a thumbs up to the last one. I said, what was the meme? He said, there's a picture of that baby with the face going... It's saying, uh, like a victory result, like, you know? It says, me when I find the last can of Guinness in the fridge. And I said, you know what, Eddie? I think it's time we stop speaking to each other. Because you and me, we're just on different planes, sunshine. And I don't want to be fucking dragged down by you or anyone else. 
Into the head, wig show, and we go. But I, I cannot wait for the Geneva Motor Show. It's coming up in nine months' time. Fuck, man, fuck. No! It's not gonna be a fucking silver. I'm gonna bronze this shit again, man. I'm fucking bronzed out of it, man. It's a real bronzer. Ugh! Showboat. The writing on the road, why do they let people do that, you know? It's not the fucking Tour de France. Who do you think I am? Jan Ulrich, fuck you! Fucking Geraint Thomas. He was a fucking... Ah, oh, back it overtook again, man. Fucking all rock and roll. Sparko! Fucking poker dot jersey for me. Fucking beating black and blue. It's gonna get laughed at back at the race house. It's gonna get laughed at, man. Fuck it, man. Can't believe this. Finish this fucking track and get laughed at, man. Get the wet. Get out. What the fuck are you doing, man? It's not the M50. Move! The fucking sound pit! You're choking me! What the fuck are you doing, man? He's not gonna let- I'm gonna get past him on this turn! And they're trying to get me on the outside! I'm still in it, though! Suck my bell! See you later! Fucking don't wait up! See you later. Gonna take these two out of business. These two out of commish. This guy. See you later. I'm Connor. Fuck you, man. This red ghost here. See you later. Should have gone to Zurich earlier, man. You're way too late. Not enough time. Not enough time. Into the Antoine Schienbach. As we cruise into Tier Garden. Respectable position. I don't care, man. It's not going to be Silverstone, but I mean, it's going to be fucking Bronze Age. At this stage. Bronze Age coming up. Here we go. Fucking Ralph Schumacher. That one, man. Fucking Ralph Schumacher and the Bronze Trove. Absolutely sickened, guys. Sickened and appalled. You know, I'd offer you a bit of shrimp, but uh, as well, you know. I raided most of that last night. Zurich, you know, blame me though. Thanks very Zurich Drone dot IE. Thanks very much, Zurich Drone dot IE. Thanks so much. Still watching you, John. Thanks. Gonna get off, man. You know, I'd offer you a bit of shlur, Feral but, uh, philosopher. I raided so most much. of that last night. Everybody in the chat, thanks for watching. For Sam Poor, Max Darwin, Connor Fowl, Mikio, Don Scribbler. At the boozer in Donnybrook, and there's a pitch to RTE dropping. Connor makes me his name going on behind I me. I just spoke to your wife. Are you being the legal team in there? Martin C, thanks so much. Fraud. Martin C, thank you so much. Me and the Philip Morris boys were in town for the weekend to spend some of the big tobacco cheddar. <laughs> Was wondering if the Airbnb is free or does the Lou Dog have it for the weekend? <laughs> If not, I'll stay at Eddie. <laughs> this is this is gold. If not, I'll stay at Eddie Jordan's casa and head to Lily's. Thanks, Martin C. I'll hook you up the Airbnb later. Maybe you can share a fucking bed with the Lou Dog. He doesn't mind that kind of stuff, you know. He insisted, not me. Um. The Feral Philosopher, thank you so much, Jerk Drone and Chip Norris and everybody else. Ta Toto Wolf, Mama Duck, Wee Joe, Stevie B. Too many to mention. Blessed and cursed. Cursed never to win the bronze the gold. Blessed to have all your support. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back now and inject Muntman in his fucking head. Just jab a needle in his head, but he gets a treat for it. Look, guys, I'll see you later on. Why are there no Irish F1 drivers? Eddie Irvine, Philly Tagger, I don't know. Eddie Irvine threw the fucking mantle out the window. I heard he's got a cinema in his gaff, you know? If you have that sort of fucking tech setup in your fucking spare room, why, why, oh, why would you want to spend your days looking at a fucking track driving like this? Getting shouted at by people like me in the pit to be motivated. Those were halcyon days, though, you know? Pit stop at Jordan's. Fucking weekend at Bernie's, man. We weekend at Eddie's, man. Katie Price, formerly known as Jordan. I was her Andre. Do you know what I mean? I was the Peter Andre on the scene at the time, guys. Just giving the fucking pit stop a voice to the drivers. I told you what I said to Ralph, but they cruise into the pit, they'd have 15 seconds to get their fucking bearings together, sip water out the bladder, and uh, then a fucking quick boost chat from me. Another boost, John. I gave Ralph the usual fucking telling off, but I also tell, I give Eddie the kind of, this kind of job. Ed, man, it's yours to lose, babe. If you don't come home with the gold, don't come crying me later on when there's no grey goose in your fucking green room. By the way, Jordan's fucking staying with me tonight. And that would get him pumped, you know? She wasn't, you know? I was married. I couldn't even go there. Don't even go there. But it's not, you know, you could spin the yarn. That would just make them want to go even harder because they'd hate me. They'd hate the face and they'd just want to fucking cruise on like you know and uh yeah Eddie Jordan would just be there in the fucking pits with a stonker I'd be like get a grip man get a fucking grip just smoking all the Benson and Hedges that were comp Benson and Hedges would leave boxes of fucking fags and smokes all over the pit and as soon as the Jordanian dreamer would reach the pit He'd stick on those fucking headphones with the, the mouthpiece, pretending he was listening in and giving orders. He just had tunes on. <laughs> Smoking fags, listening to fucking Frank Sinatra and fucking the rest of the boys, like, you know. Anyway, we're going to have to get off. It's been a fucking real emotional one. We're going to hit the silve tomorrow. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. I'll see you later. Adio, sayonara. And remember, get down to your local Zurich broker. It's never too late to start a pension fund.